Christian at CYR recovering Las Vegas in the world. Today we welcome on two of the stars of Lifetime's newest film that will be debuting on Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday night sex scandal. Actresses Devin Dakota and Kiana Lynn are here to talk about their roles in the film. Thank you both for joining us on CYR today. How are you guys? Good. Thank, Thank you for having us. <laughs> You're most welcome. And also joining us today is Steve Wanderview, sponsor, the founder of Epic Financial Strategies, LLC, Mr. Rob Gill. Rob, thanks for joining us today. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Chris. Thank you. And thanks for having me on the show with these fine actresses. They're rising stars in Hollywood, Rob. No denying yes. that. We're going to get into that in a little. We're going to get in that in a little bit. But just to begin, uh, let's start with Devin, and then I'm going to ask Kiana. Um, guys, very important message. Very topical topic. Um, for this film, something that a lot of young people deal with more technology than ever. Devin, I love your thoughts on the message of the film and the importance of it to begin. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the movie essentially is about young people and dealing with social media, um, especially in in a time like this where I feel like a lot of um, if you're posting on social media, a lot of people think it's like a highlight reel, right? And um, you, if you're sending something like what we're talking about in this film, um, nudes, if we're talking about that, or, or pictures and videos that are being taken without consent, um, it's, it is a really important message that I think a lot of young people really need to, to be aware of. And um, it's really just about trusting people, um, trusting the wrong or right people, um, and kind of navigating high school throughout social these times, these crazy times of social media. Keon, same thoughts, message of the film, the importance of it. Yeah, I think that was what drew me initially to the project. I think I found that, you know, obviously this is such a, a timely matter and it affects young people everywhere. And, you know, people even in our generation, everyone, everywhere, social media is a really sort of insidious superpower in a way. And so I think I felt that the message behind this film was to remind people that it's okay to have conversations about this and to tell people when, you know, you feel things are out of line or if you feel uncomfortable with certain situations. I think, I think opening dialogue um, and making sure that everybody, you know, is somehow involved and, and protected in a way um, was the, was the takeaway message for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rob, you use social media every day for your business in Epic. You have three kids. What do you tell them about using social media? You know, it's funny. Um, I'm sitting here and I, I, I just realized this, that I have three kids, a senior, junior, and an eighth grader. My, eighth, my daughter's an eighth grader. And I have over 200, just an average guy, but I have over 250,000 followers across all my platforms. It's all about financial education. And my kids do they love looking at social media, but they don't post anything. As a matter of fact, whenever I try and post my son, and this isn't because of me, I'm like, what are you doing? Use my platform to grow. You know, this is like the craziness that I know, and I, and I know the risks. Even when I try and have my son post his videos for his highlight reels for basketball, he gets mad if I just isolate him and not do the whole team. You know what I mean? Because I'll have team clips, but then I'll have, you know, as a dad, you always want to have clips of your son. And he's very embarrassed over that. So they're all, they're all on Snapchat, which is the one platform I don't know about. Um, I don't have a skill set there, but I know that there's, everyone can see who's invited to a party or not. And I've seen the effects of that in my house where every once in a while, one of my kids will feel left out somewhere along the line. My oldest probably struggles more than anything. My youngest is probably the smartest and my middle is the most gifted, but none of them really are they're on social media, but they don't post anything about themselves. Devin, um, you know, I, I think I think what's 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 important to note is is that this movie um, is probably great for both parents and teenagers and above, right? I would say so. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And like you know, social media wasn't around that in for our parents' generation. Um, for the a lot older of people. For all the older for, people. For all the oldies out there, no. But, um, <laughs> no they, so they, you know, I think this movie is, like you said, educational for both students and um, for both young young people and adults because, you know, they they weren't introduced to a world like this until they were much older. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Can I go ahead, go ahead, Rob. Both of them? Um, that I think it was Netflix that had the documentary. I think it was Social Dilemma. I don't really remember the name, but they show, I forget what it was, but they really showed how the algorithm really kind of puts right on your newsfeed what you want to do. And I think that education alone for kids is, I, I didn't see, I, I actually can't wait to watch this movie now because I, I, I didn't see it. I don't know if it's out or if it's coming out, I think it's coming out Friday. Saturday, um, Saturday at eight o'clock on Lifetime, Rob. 
Sorry about that. Um, but it, it is interesting. I definitely want my daughter to say it, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my, 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 my question is, were you guys in the movie, does it kind of talk about that side of it? Is it just like, you know, because one of my, 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 my business associates has a niece that when she was younger, uh, found herself in a situation where there was somebody that wanted to meet her at a mall, you know, and it was all through social media. Mm -hmm. They were able to get in front of it, thank God. Um, so I know it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Devin, thoughts? Uh Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> Sorry. The question is, in the movie, does it get into that kind of stuff, the the actual algorithm, or just hunters, just just, just folks that are out looking to do the wrong thing? Uh, I would say it, it focuses more more on the hunters of it. So basically, the the this group of of boys and okay. on the football team, they essentially make this anonymous website where they can upload photos that they have either received from girls that they're talking to or photos that they've taken without their consent and they upload it onto this website for i guess whoever has the link for for them to see and so they're basically hunting on all of these girls at the school and the girls are completely unaware of what's going on um so that's that's what it, it touches on in this film Mm -hmm. And is it all secretive between each girl? Is it just like a one-on-one, -on -one, or are the girls communicating on it to each other? The girls don't know about it. Um, okay. That's Got the it. unfortunate part. The girls are completely unaware that all of this stuff is happening. It's sort of this secret. Um, it, it forms like a pact between the boys at this school and boys at other high schools in neighboring areas. And so it's one of these things where if you're in the group, you can exchange photos and, you know, you be involved in that world, but girls in this case have no idea what's going yeah. on. It's wow. Really, really, it's a really tricky thing to navigate. I think. I think what's so special about this film is, you, even as like a young woman watching a film like this, you're like, wow, you're seeing Sean, who is the boy journey we follow through this. Um, we see where his, like, how his decisions can be made. How he could have such poor decision making at certain times and how easy it is to be influenced by certain people, mm -hmm. um, how fast it can happen and like almost mm -hmm. unexpected and the consequences appear and you have to deal with it. And yeah, so it, it definitely plays into this like, you know, two different environments until until those worlds kind of collide at the end and, and you get to see the reper repercussions. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. So, mm -hmm. so, 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 just to break down the characters for the movie, Devin plays the popular high school cheerleader. Devin, talk about this role. Uh, so, so I play Brooklyn, and yeah, uh, like you said, she is the she's the captain of the cheer team. Um, I was really drawn to Brooklyn because she's kind of like a she doesn't kind of like a gives no f's attitude about her um she's very i think she's a very like strong-willed powerful woman and when this happens to her she's kind of the one to be like nah this isn't cool like someone needs to put an end to this like she she doesn't really take just take shit um and so i think that's why i i really was like i i think there needs to be one person like that in the in a in a film like this one person to be um kind of put their foot down and be like, this isn't okay. Like, is someone going to do something about this, essentially? And then Kiana plays Lauren, who is in the high school band. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was excited when I read the initial breakdown for Lauren. Um, she is a drummer. And when I was a kid, I used to play the drums. So in the back of my mind, I was like, oh my God, is there a way, like, they're going to have to train me? <laughs> so I was so excited. <laughs> it didn't go that far in the end. <laughs> But um, that was part of it. Uh, yeah, but Lauren, in, in, in a nutshell, is basically this girl that just, you know, she holds her own. She's very much, like, into what she's into. She's not overly fussed by the politics of being in high school. She's very mature for her age. And I think that's what gives her, gives the um, relationship between Lauren and Sean so much nuance. Because you're seeing this really honest friendship. And you're seeing it fall into, like, other people's understanding of what that friendship is and when other people put their opinions or thoughts about a relationship or a dynamic a lot of things change can change mm. and so Absolutely. so Devin Kiana Rob has a book about to come out called surviving success Rob what is your advice to you know young people rising in Hollywood sports entertainment wow. to maintain that success as they continue to climb their trajectory and not fall down well 
let me I'm, I, I can't um, be somebody that gives the greatest advice from experience because I'm not really sure how old you girls you ladies are but I, I got sober when I was 26 so anything before that if I would have had any kind of success I probably wouldn't be alive right mm. so um, for, for you I'm wildly impressed at the stage that you're at right now to to be able to kind of you know work to where you're at which is pretty incredible I, I can't even say I relate to that now what my book does talk about, though, after age 26 and the multiple businesses that I've created and the opportunities, I've, I've achieved financial success all the way up. But I also wasn't ready for it on different staggering steps to get there. So subconsciously, I did things to ruin it, right? And this is as, as part of my journey. And surviving success is about understanding, in the book, it's about wealth wounds. I grew up in an environment where we run out of, ran out of money on the 20th of every month. A middle class in New Jersey, a schoolyard that everybody knew each other's business, lots of insecurities, eventually led to my drinking. Um, but because even though I got sober, that didn't mean I was ready for money. That didn't mean I was ready to, um, you know, really do the right thing from the intoxication of money, because that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. the book, how to survive that, um, how to, because I've learned in sobriety how to build businesses, but now how do I, how do I go from saying, hey, I'd like to make $2 million this year to hey, I'd like to make $2 million or more so I could impact over a million people when it comes to financial education and be able to share with them tools and strategies and then stand on my shoulders, not, not make the mistakes that I made. So that's what the book really talks about. Um, opening chapter talks about when I got shot at in Jersey City, New Jersey, um, a long time ago. I'm, 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 I'm not one of the older people, right? Um, <laughs> right behind you, Rob. <laughs> and, uh, and we just go on the journey from there in my sobriety and business and, you know, throughout the book, financial education and, and how to, how to really kind of look at things when it comes to money, time, freedom, and, and, and maybe not cling to status quo, maybe not be like everybody else or, or follow the path of what the media tells us, but really kind of invest in the real estate between your ears, which is, you know, your brain, but not necessarily through the conditioning of the financial education that's out there, but, you know, learn more entrepreneurial stuff. Mm -hmm. So well, that's what the book is about. But thank you for that, Chris. I appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. Um, Dev and Kian, I want to ask you both. Um, you both have had or are having rising Hollywood careers. I want to talk with you both about many of your successes. But just to begin, like, yeah, Devin, what is it like to deal with fame? Like, what have you realized in this upward trajectory? What have you done to keep going and stay grounded? That is a great question. And it's something that I'm definitely still trying to figure out. Um, I don't know if I will ever have it 100% figured out. Um, this this industry is, is a crazy one to be in, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I learned very early on. Um, I had a lot of success really, really early on in my career. And kind of after that, when I hit um, around the age that I was going into high school, I started hearing the word know a lot that I didn't get it that I I and hearing that word made me feel like I wasn't good enough um mm. and I'm like oh maybe I should try to figure out a different career path and I'm thinking this when I'm like 13 14 years old I'm like oh maybe I should maybe I should be doing something else maybe I should think about being a teacher or a dance teacher I'm thinking all these other things wow. and my agent um I will never forget this he said to me in this industry, it's very important to know and understand that you will probably hear 99 no's before one yes. And idea. that is the only advice that I think that has been yeah. keeping me semi-sane in this industry. I've now been doing it for 10 years. Wow. Um, and so, and you know, social media plays a, plays a huge role in this, in this industry, which also hasn't been easy for me to navigate. And I'm not going to lie to you, I don't have it figured out, but um, we're taking it one day at a time. And one thing also that I love about this industry though is I get to meet amazing people. Like I know now I know Kiana and we and we actually did work together when we were mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like how many years ago? Like seven years ago. And so it's so nice to like reunite with your friends and just I've just met so many incredible people. So there's definitely some some pros and cons to this to this industry, but I uh, wouldn't yeah. change it for the world. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Kiana, you're on the Hardy Boy series on Hulu. Besides this, I mean, what has it been like to navigate the 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 rising ladder that you're climbing? Yeah, absolutely. That was such a blessing that that series. Um, I worked with such an incredible cast and crew. We all cared so much about the project, and because it was a series, obviously, it's going on for 
three, four, five months at a time, just depending on the episodes we're doing. And so we, like, those people are my family through and through. And it's really, I don't know any other industry where you form such intimate relationships, where it's possible to form such intimate relationships because you're becoming friends on screen and then mm. doing that in your private life as well. And so just like the intensity of like, I just met this person a few days ago. They're already sleeping over at my house. We're having breakfast together. Like they're like your friends. Like they're becoming family so quick. But, but wait, what about the one you can't stand? How do you handle that? I I don't know. <laughs> I'm not on wood, but like I know. I was gonna say I haven't had a bad. I haven't met a bad person yet. I know. I haven't. Well, they may not be bad, but you guys might not click for whatever reason. It's gonna happen at some point. It, maybe it will. Hopefully, I'm like you know ready for that when it comes. But yeah, <laughs> thankfully it's been it's been such a treat. And like like Devin said, yeah, we met years ago. You know, if you're if you're mm -hmm. local, you end up finding each other in different yeah. places. And yeah. but, Chris, can I ask a question? Yeah, uh, you're more than welcome to. I'm sure. Yeah. So you guys did this movie together. First of all, from from beginning of filming to end, how long is that process? And are you guys spending 18 hours a day? Is that where like the relationship gets really <laughs> fortified is that is that the process how it works so i think for this film um we did it over four weeks i think it was in in Ottawa. you did it over four weeks i did it over, I was, four, I did it over four days okay this girl this girl this girl she was there almost every single day for probably uh 15 it felt like you were there for much more than four days <laughs> crazy oh my god i know i felt like i was there it's because you become so close with these people yeah. that every time i was there like we were we were inseparable when i was there yeah. but i was going i was traveling like back and forth from home to, to where we were shooting like almost every other week it felt like yeah so for yeah. this it was it was a quick four weeks in total yeah and that wow. came with, like prep and wardrobe getting to set meeting everybody and just straight to it um but we all had such a natural rhythm i think it was very easy for us to get going yeah. and do you go home at night or is there a trailer like, uh we have a hotel that they keep us okay. got it. Yeah. Got it. but as far as like when you're filming a movie like that are you and you guys are pro i mean you've been doing it for a long time it seems like but how how, how how's the anticipation of seeing the final product from your last day of filming like how does that what does that feel like and how do you how do you reserve patience and uh, I'm, I'm always, that's a good question. I'm always so curious about the final cut, um, because such small things can make a huge difference, especially in a film like this, where small, you know, nuances or looks can mean such different things when you're interpreting mm -hmm. the character. But I actually got lucky. I asked, um, Danielle, who's our wonderful producer, if I could go shadow one of the days that she was editing. <gasps> How far <laughs> So I saw one of the scenes get like put together and like oh that's so fun. It's a brilliant ear for, for just cues and for dialogue and for pacing. Um and of course as an actor you're usually not privy to that. And so um I just love that's a whole that's magic on its own when when the mm -hmm. product gets into the hands of other people who are seeing seeing the footage for the first time and thinking new things about it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really <laughs> And another question, thank you, Chris, for your patience. Um, sure, go ahead. How do you go from acting as actresses as one person and then going back to who you really are in life? What is that transition like? Well, that's a great, that's a good question. It's, um, I, don't, I don't really know. I feel like it's always been kind of, it's definitely a whole other world. I feel like when we're filming, it's like we're, we're literally on another planet. We're yeah. working for so many hours a day that when I come home, um, I mean, the, and there's been projects that I would like, I was in Montreal a couple years ago for three months at a time. And so I'm there and that was like a whole other world. And then I come home and it's just like, like, did that really happen? It's almost otherworldly. Like, was I just there for three months? And I had this, like, I had a whole other like family I was spending all of my time with. And then you come yeah. home, everything, like nothing's changed at home. I'm like, Okay, so now we're just back to normal. It, it takes a minute. Um, yeah. and sometimes I just think that it's like fake. I'm living in a fake world. <laughs> I believe it. I that. Kiana? Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I have a really big family um, that's all based in Toronto. So whenever I come back from a project, they're always like, how was it? Like, what happened today? And I'm like, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> it goes and it goes and it goes. And you, like... The like the fabulous thing about being an actor is that you actually have to commit yourself a hundred percent day in day out. You don't get a second chance at it. 
you know what I mean? If you're so that, that idea of like everybody showing up and being a hundred percent committed to getting done on the day, I think is brilliant. And so that energizes you in a very kind of mystical way. I don't know how to put it, but yeah, I think you almost like black out at certain points. Right? Yeah, as you're like, well, you black out. Present <laughs> that you don't remember it, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I want to ask both of you. Um, obviously, the movie focuses a lot on social media. How has that both impacted your careers, your self esteem, your life? Because there's just the access to people who are in TV, movies, film, music. I mean, hate is easy to be shared and seen more than ever before. Not wasn't like that 30, 40 years ago. So thoughts to both of you? Social media is a is a, a scary, scary thing. And when I when I first got a following, um, I remember I hit like maybe 10,000 followers when I was in like the eighth grade or maybe the ninth grade. And that was and I'm from a small town, so it was a big deal to like everyone around me. And so that was my first like, oh my God, what is good? Like, what is this? What is gonna happen from this? And it, and as scary as it is, like um, my social media is a highlight reel. It's just a highlight reel of my life. It's not really me at the end, at my core at the end of the day. Um, and so, and I, I have gotten some some mean comments and you know that's that's kind of you kind of have to expect that unfortunately when you're in an in industry like this or when you do have a big platform like that and you are putting yourself out there on social sure. media. Sure. I mean you've um, almost got 200,000 followers on your Instagram, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So and you know at first um I, I got one bad, I got one mean comment, it wasn't even that mean, and they were like, oh, this girl's like, pants are ugly. And I remember, I like, was crying to my boyfriend about it. I'm like, oh my God, this person hates me. They they actually hate me. And he really calmed me down. He's like, at the end of the day, like, you don't know this person. You don't owe them anything. So what, they don't like your pants? Like, you don't know. So it's really hard to ignore it. Um, yeah. I've had a really hard time struggling with that. I'm still working on that. but. Um, at the end of the day, like, I think that's, that's what you have to do. Kiana thoughts. Yeah. Um, I think I've always been sort of a private person, um, especially on social media. I grew up with older <laughs> sisters who were kind of like millennials, so they didn't, they didn't have social media. So I was kind of in this, in this network of people that didn't really focus on social media that much, which looking back at it now, I'm somewhat fortunate, um, or I'm, I'm grateful for that experience, um, I think, I think it is a difficult thing. I I, I have so much um, admiration for young people who are able to be so um, steadfast on how they navigate social media because it's really just a skill set that only young people have. Like, mm -hmm. real. and I think it's 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 brilliant how much like resilience there are in young people. I have a nephew who's 16 years old. I love him to bits, and he's so savvy with like. TikTok, Snapchat, all of it. And he still manages at the end of the day, like it's part of his life, but he's so grounded in it. He's he's found a way to feel really comfortable in, in expressing who he is and not taking it, you know, too far. And I look at him and I'm like, okay, there's that that gives me some like hope, I think, you know. Last thing, um, Rob will love this. Rob has been Rob is a frequent visitor to Las Vegas here to see me, yours truly, and a bunch of other things. Um, Devin, Kiana, have you either of you been to Las Vegas thoughts? I have. Have you, Devin? I have only been to Vegas one time, and it was right in the beginning of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I, I was doing. You a did not trip. get the normal Vegas experience. No, it was it was empty. There was nobody there. So I actually have not seen Vegas with like <laughs> the more real than stuff. 10 people on the, the strip. Real, the real stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was it was very weird here at that time. I mean, you had restaurants and you basically had restaurants and pools open and bars, and that was literally it. I mean, it was just a very different time. There was no live entertainment and all that other stuff going on. So, but we're back to normal. We just, you know, had the Super Bowl last month and we're just rocking and rolling here in Vegas. You know, 50, 60 live entertainment shows a night, guys, at least. Wow. Performances Chris, going can I on ask every... you a yes, absolutely sure. Have you have you seen Adele? 
Uh, I have not yet, but we hopefully will at some point. We get around to see all the major acts. We just saw Barry Manilow a couple months ago, oh, Cool in the Gang, cool. which Rob loves, Paula Abdul, cool and John when she was a lot, Dion Warwick. We get to see everybody. I was with Ricky Martin a couple years ago when he was here, had his residency, where Lady Gaga has her residency. So we get to cover all the stuff here in Vegas, absolutely. Wow. Uh, Rob, any Rob, any final comments before we wrap up, sir? Questions? No, uh, no questions. I just want to honor you know, you guys, gals, uh, for all the hard work and the impacts that you're having on people's lives. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you so much for sharing this 30 minutes with me. And Chris, thank you for coordinating it. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So Friday night sex scandal will air on Lifetime at 8 p.m. Eastern time this said Saturday. Saturday night. This coming Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. The name of the movie is Friday Night Sex Scandal, but it's airing on Saturday. Friday is airing on Saturday, Rob. <laughs> It'll be on Lifetime television on 8 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be debuting. And then of course you can watch it on Lifetime's website after the fact. Um, Devin Kiana, thank you so much for joining us. Very quickly, each of you in in, in 30 seconds. Um, most important message of this film, you think, Devin? most important message of this film oh gosh how do i put that into 30 seconds sorry sorry um oh my gosh just be 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 careful <laughs> I yeah think i think the, so i think um, so i think be be careful with who you trust and don't don't i mean it's easier said than done but try not to fall into into the wrong friend group it's very you'll and you'll see in the film it is very easy to be so quickly influenced by the wrong people. Um, yep. Yep. Kiana. I was just going to say, check in on your friends. Always check in on your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Walk out for your friends too and who they're dating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being on CY interview today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for watching today's CY interview segment from Las Vegas. Please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button to be updated on all future CY interview content from Las Vegas and beyond.